Genesis chapter 2, and this, and this is during the seven year captivity. So we need to understand the, the context of this. That the children of Israel had been in, uh, the Hebrew children had been in bondage and slavery in Egypt with the type of the world. It speaks of the world, represents bondage. Okay, for 400 years they've been in bondage. 40 years they've wandered in the wilderness to go to the promised land. They got to the promised land. They defiled it. They contaminated by their sin. God sent the prophets. They killed the prophets. They persecuted the prophets. And so then there's a chastisement. The chastisement that God gave to a nation, Israel, that's the apple of his eye, for seven years of captivity in Babylon. Again, Babylon is the type of the world. Okay, so what happened was, since they were in the promised land, physically they're in the promised land, but their heart was in the world, or Babylon, God just let them be chastised. He let them have what they thought they wanted for a while, until they were sick of it. Okay, so that basically what we're looking at is that much of the life of Daniel, we're going to look at Daniel tonight, and that, and that much of Daniel's life is in captivity uh, during the seven years in Babylon, which is, with, uh, which is the type of the world. Okay, so in this uh, in chapter 2 here, uh, there's a dream. Uh, God, God himself is going to give Nebuchadnezzar a dream. So let, let me make this clear. Don't, don't think that you're real spiritual because God gives you a dream because Nebuchadnezzar is not a believer here and God's going to give him a dream. Okay, so be careful. Don't put your shingle out. Dreams interpret their dream because God gives you a dream. Okay, so basically God is going to give Nebuchadnezzar a dream that will reveal world history uh, from the time of Nebuchadnezzar to the time that Jesus comes. Okay, this is kind of set the scene uh, so that our message tonight and what, what God, here's what we got to do. We got to take this message that was spoken this, this long ago and bring it to our life here today. Amen. Our circumstances, our situation, do we apply the Word of God to our life? That's the purpose of the church service. We have a life-changing spirit with a life-changing God. Okay, Daniel chapter 2 and verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was, was troubled. The word troubled in the Hebrew means his spirit was agitated, uh, and his sleep broke from him. Now here's a very powerful, wealthy, influential, influential man. This is a very, very powerful king. Uh, for those of you that have been here for a while, uh, remember how we were talking about uh, Nehemiah coming and rebuilding the wall? We talked about the wall was type of representative of how strong and how influential and how powerful the people were that dwelt in that city. Remember, God, the, the wall for, of uh, Jerusalem had been torn down, and so then basically the enemy had legal access to it. So, so then when they were trying to rebuild uh, the temple, rebuild the city, so that they could rebuild their lives, they had the wall, which is the hedge of protection, and the enemy could get to them. Okay, I said that to say this. Listen to this, these facts about uh, Babylon. This is what archaeologists have, have discovered. That uh, Babylon, the city of Babylon, was, was like the New York City of their time. And that it was like 14 miles this way. Four, it was like a square. 14 miles this way, 14 miles this way, 14 miles this way, and 14 miles this way. The walls that they had around their city were 300 feet high. 300 feet high. That's like from whole plate to, to right field in a, in a normal baseball field. The walls were 80 feet thick. <coughs> now, that's why I've, I've said in, in time spans that there were certain walls that were built that were so strong that, uh, that depending on where it was, two, three, four, or five chariots could pass side by side on the top of some of these walls. And the, and the walls that they made, not only were the 300 feet high, they were 80 feet thick, and they were they went 33 feet below the surface of the dirt, so you couldn't tunnel under. That's how strong. Now, basically, what we're talking about, the children have been taken into captivity and they become slaves to build, to build their city, to build their kingdom, and that's the bondage. And that so, uh, each of us a type of type of the world takes speaks of a type of bondage that we would be in slavery to alcohol, slavery to drugs, slavery to immorality. Slavery, slavery and anger, the greed, the selfishness, the pride, the, the things, the, all kind of bondages will come into your life. Okay, now, let's, let's, this is going to tell a story, and the story that the scripture is going to that share here today is going to, you're going to see this is going to relate to every circumstance within our life right now. We've got to bring this, now faith is, now faith is, okay, so that we're, this is going to be activated right within our life. Okay, so God gives Nebuchadnezzar a dream. And he doesn't know the dream. 
and his, his spirit is troubled and he's agitated so that he couldn't even sleep. And the king commanded to call the magicians. Okay, so basically, uh, this is going to be a prophetic picture is that all the magic, all the sorcerers, all those uh, uh, astrologers, the study of stars, the study of planets, all of those that were into witchcraft and uh, uttering spells, all of them, none of them that were in the occult, into witchcraft, had demonic powers, had the occultic powers, none of them could answer, none of them had the answer for what was coming out. See, basically, here's what we need to understand. God, gave, God did something, and the devil doesn't know what God did. Yeah. And so the occultic powers, so the Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. So he calls all the magicians, all, all the witchcraft people, all the occultic people, and he's got all these people on salary, so he's paying all these different people. So he says, uh, the, in verse 2, the king commanded all the magicians and all the astrologers, all the sorcerers, all the Chaldeans, and the Chaldeans are like the royal counselors and the wise men. Okay, so he called all of his sorcerers, all of his astrologers, uh, uh, to show the king his dream. So the king and this stood before the king. So he calls all these magicians, all the sorcerers, all the witchcraft people, all the occultic people, all them that had their so-called demonic powers. And uh, so they come and they stand before the king, and the king said to them, I have dreamed the dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king uh, in, in, what, in that language, and, O oh, king, O oh, king, live forever, tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. And the king answered and said to the Chaldean, The thing is gone for me. So basically what he's saying is, I had this dream, this dream was so powerful, but I don't remember the dream. Anybody beside me ever had it? You know that God gave you a dream, but you couldn't remember the dream? Yeah. God been speaking the, uh, to, well, from the beginning of time, God been speaking the, to people in dreams. And so I say about 20 years ago, God really been kind of, uh, upgraded that and really began to speak it to a lot of people in dreams. Now there's going to be a, a picture here, a prophetic picture, that God speaks to this uh, ungodly king and gives them this dream and watch how this all happens. Now remember, Daniel and the Hebrew children are basically in bondage. Okay, um, the, the king answered, said, the king is gone from me, verse 5, and if you will not make it known to me, if you do not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. Okay, so the king makes this decree. Okay, I got this dream. Now, I got all of you on salary. You say you got all these powers. I got you, I got you, you know, this would be like, let's just say like in our government, we have the president, but then the, we got all the congress, we got all the senator. So basically what he's saying here, uh, you know, I'm, I got you all these titles, I got you all these positions, I'm paying you all your bills, I got you on salary, now, now perform what you what you're supposed to do, and he says that if you don't, then I know that you're false. Why am I even having you on salary? And so you're going to die, and your houses should be made as a dunghill. Now that's how the world treats people. Yes, Come on, yes. take that. That's how the world yes. will treat people. Yes. Hang on, because we are going somewhere. Yes. Okay, so he said. Yeah. So that there's that's the decree that's been given. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof. You shall receive of me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Okay, so he says it. That basically, kind of a wise thing that he says here in the sense that he said, Okay, tell, if you tell me the interpretation of the dream, then I'm going to promote you. I'm going to give you great gifts. Kind of extreme here if you don't. <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't do what you're being paid to do, then... A little extreme, a little extreme there. Okay, so, so they're kind of put in the situation, and the reason this really kind of affects uh, how this can affect us that what well, we need to understand that when the the Hebrew children were in Babylon, God had elevated, God had given such divine supernatural favor with Daniel. Daniel had favor with God, so he had been elevated, he had been promoted. Here's the problem when he's. When uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to kill the wise men. Daniel was one of the wise men. Yeah. Okay, so the decree goes forth. Now, the king, doesn't, the king doesn't care about Daniel. I mean, he has favor with Daniel. But it, basically, he, it's like he's saying, like, I've got this need, and if you don't meet my need, I will kill you. <laughs> and then, not only will I kill you, your house will be like a dunghill. That's how the devil will treat people. Yeah. Now, watch now. 
Because then you're going to come upon the scene, and then you're going to be a type of the church. They're going to intercede going to, and going to stand in the gap for the land that God should not destroy it. So the decree is made, yeah. and it goes to all the witchcraft people, all the occult people, all the sorcerers. Say, uh, that I, I've got this, I've got this problem, and you say you've got the answer, and I've been paying you for the answer. Now ex execute the answer. Okay. Now what I'm telling you yeah. is that Jesus, Jesus is the head of the body, and we are the church, he's the head of the church, and we are the body of Christ, Jesus will live his life through us, and basically, we need to hear, to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now that's kind of the bottom line here, that when that prophetic word was given, and then Pastor Jane said, you know, if your life, if you had this dream, and you, and you, you know, she used the word dream, and you had this yeah. dream, you had this vision for your life, and everything come to naught, okay, so imagine, number one, they're in Babylon, they're under, this, under judgment, and then, kind of, oh, uh, I got, yeah. I got favor here in, in Babylon. Oh. Then the decree goes, yeah. uh, you're going to die. <laughs> if you don't, if you can't execute, if you can't tell me, number one, you got to not only interpret the dream, you have to tell me what the dream was because he didn't remember the dream. So then, basically, what we're talking, that's why I opened up. But Daniel eleven thirty two, they that know their God yeah. shall be strong and should do exploit. Here's what we don't want to do. This will over and over again. We've been saying it's been so powerful. What we don't want to do, come in that door and tolerate a, a dead, dry, boring a Bible study uh, that tells about a historical Jesus while we ignore him in that. Now faith is. Now faith is the subject of being hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith is called something so real. It is called a substance. You can give awesome. give uh, give some men oh. some cement, give them some wood, give them a hammer and nail, and some uh, shingles, and they can build a house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you build a house. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to build something, we just need the faith. Yes. Okay, so the, there's a problem. The problem was now understand God gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream. Yes. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so he tells them, you tell me now. Let me put this in here because he said, if you show me the dream, verse eight. If you show me the dream, the interpretation there, you shall receive of me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Not just honor, but great honor. Yeah. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Now, Proverbs 25, verse 2 said, It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, yeah. but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. Yes. Okay, so it's the glory of God. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Now, how does how does that fit us today? Is that uh, how can I live? In, how can I walk in the spirit such a way I never fulfill the lust of the flesh? See, if I really want to know, God will conceal certain things. Well, I know He will conceal. How did He? Uh, when the first guy say, "I didn't know how to cast out devils," it was hidden, but then He revealed. So if you want, yes. how many would just love? Uh, just by God, it would give my life meaning. To get people saved, yeah. get people baptized in the Holy Spirit, yeah. to get people healed, to get people delivered. Yeah. How many would just love to be able to call people up, prophesy to them? It's it's hidden. Yes. And he says, earnestly desire to and earn and covet the greatest gifts. So what I'm saying, we can tolerate in church service, but never covet the greatest gifts. And what God's saying, it's there for us. We just need to seek yes. until we find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. There's a great big difference between religion tolerating a church service, hearing go out of historical Jesus, and meeting with God on a daily basis. There's a daily bread for them that have that kind of hunger. Okay, though, verse 7. Now they answer again. And they said, they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream. They're getting a little nervous now. So the sorcerers, the occultic people, the witchcraft people, uh, uh, no, no, no. Tell us the dream, and we will show you the interpretation. And the king said, I know for certain that you would gain time, because you see that the thing is done for me, but if you will not make it done. Basically what the dream is saying, what the king is saying to them, uh, when, when you're saying again, tell me the, tell me the dream, the, what he's saying is, uh, I know that you would just brew something up, and try to convince me that it, it was the reality. I know that you're lying. That's basically what he's saying. Yeah. He's wanting them to know that no. you lied. You lied to save your own neck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, basically really what he's saying. Yeah. The answer is to let the king tell servant the dream. We would show you the interpretation. Verse 8, the king answered and said, I know for certainty that you would gain the time 
because you see that the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known to me the dreams, and the king goes right back, but there's one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak to me, till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I know that you, you should tell me the interpretation thereof. So that's what he's saying. The king is saying, okay, don't just make up interpretation. You, I need to know the dream and the interpretation. Now, basically, uh, to try to put in context what, what I'm trying to say, so that we would tonight right here receive a word, and in the word that God gives us tonight, there will be an assignment so that we could come into alignment. So back in the 80s when I was pastor of the country church, I had good doctrine, I had good teaching, I had good theory about a historical Jesus. Whether it was a dead man that gave dead service to kill. So then I had to realize, I had to realize, uh, here's where God said I could live, but the truth is I'm living down here, and either I need to compromise God's word to bring it down where it's living, or I need to change my life to come up here where God said I could live. Okay, so basically tonight there's going to be a message that would challenge us. Amen. That we would have an ear to hear oh, what the Spirit said. Like. Sometimes oh, one of the Lord. most effective ways to pray is to tell, speak God's word to Him. Yes. My sheep shall hear. Yes. My sheep shall hear your voice, God. And I want to hear. Yes. Okay, so then basically, uh, when you read in Matthew chapter 13, it talks about 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Okay, so we set the limit. How far do we want to go with God? Five, five, do I want 5% of my inheritance? 25%? 30? 60? 80? How far do we want to go? Wow. We said to him, not God, you can have as much of God that you want. You, okay, so that's basically what he's saying here. Oh, okay, so uh, there's, tonight there'll to be an assignment, yes. and that basically they didn't know their God shall be strong and shall do equally. So what we don't want to do, come in here by prayer. We got two and a half rows of prayer, books on nothing but prayer over here. Then in the middle over here, there's a whole bunch of books on the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Over there, we got books on revival. Back here on this back wall is nothing but books on deliverance and breaking curses. Over here, we got Watchman Eve, we got Derek Prince, we got Mary King Baxter, we got books on heaven and hell, we got books on praise and worship. Over here, we got books on dream interpretation. Well, we don't want to, you really don't want to come in here 20 years and not learn how to pray, not learn about the anointing, not learn about revival, not be delivered, not be, not uh, know, know how to. It basically kind of comes down to this. If. Uh, oh. How am I going to cast devils out of other people if I won't let God cast them out of me? Yeah, if I won't allow God to break curses within me, how am I going to break curses within other people? So then basically God come down to oh. my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So if I want to change others, I've got to, I've got to allow God to change me yes. and that Jesus would begin to live his life through me. Yes. Okay, so then basically, oh. what we're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see the Hebrew children in Babylon, and we're going to see that Daniel is a, in a position that, so there's a decree made, all the wise men are, are going to die, which, and that would include Daniel. All right, now let's pick up our story again at verse, uh, verse 10. The child eats an answer before the king has said, oh, there's not a man upon earth that can show the king's banner, therefore the, there's, there's no king, there's no lord, there's no ruler, no answer this thing, uh, any magician or astrologers are Chaldean. So basically, the sorcerers, the witchcraft people, the occultic people, uh, all the consulates, what they're saying is, they're beginning to get nervous and begin to rip. Uh, he's put us in a position, we could make up a lie, but we can't know the dream. We don't know the dream, so we can't make up a false interpretation and tell the king what it is. So they're put in a position, so now they're getting nervous. So now they begin to make excuses and begin to, to ramble a little bit. So then verse 11, they say, it's a rare thing, it's a rare, this is rare. It's a rare thing that the king requires, that there, there's none other show before the king except the gods that are ruling as not with flesh. So then verse 12, now, so their response is, we, we don't have the goods. Yeah. And the king said, if you don't have the goods, you're going to die. Wow. Yeah. So verse 12, for this call, the king was, was angry, which means in the Hebrew, enraged. And he became very furious, which means he began to burst out in rage. So he became, the king was angry, he became very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So basically the original decree was, okay, if, uh, 
Tell me the meaning of the dream and you live, you, and I'll give you gifts and give you great reward. I'll promote you, give you a title, give you a position, I'll give you recognition. But if you can't interpret the dream uh, and, and tell me the meaning of the, the dream and the meaning of the dream, you're going to die. And your house shall be made as a dunghill. Okay, so then basically they can't come up, they don't have the goods. Yep. There are going to be things, there are going to be problems and circumstances upon planet earth. Yes. In our nation, in our city, in our church, in our family, in our own life. As we got to bring it, it begins with our own life and goes to our marriage, to our children, to our family, uh, to our church, to our city, to our nation, to planet earth, to the kingdom of God. So for this call, the king was angry, very afraid, and commanded the destroy of the wise men in Babylon. So the first thing was, okay, if you if you don't if you don't perform, you're going to die. Now he gives the decree, you will die. So he says. He, he says, makes the decree, and he commanded, destroy the wise men of Babylon. And verse 13, and the decree went forth. The decree went forth that the wise men, the sorcerers, and the witchcraft people, uh, the astrologers, the wise men, the consulate, that the wise men should be slain. So now they're looking for Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Now here's Daniel, who is in Babylon, which basically Babylon is the type of the world. So the, one of the ways that that relates to us today, we may we may be saved, we may be a Christian, we may be uh, baptized to the Holy Spirit, we may have a calling and an anointing, but we're still working in John and Babylon. Yes. We're working, yes. and we're working in the world. Yes. Okay. So as you see, Daniel in Babylon, there's going to be people in in public school, people upon public jobs, people with uh, with families that are not saved. So there's a, how this comes down to is that when you see Daniel in Babylon, it's a picture of us that we're. We're not. We're just not in here 24 hours a day. Amen. There can be things that there's people. There's people. They don't have to go to Iraq or Afghanistan for war. All they need to go home. That's right. That's true. <laughs> and just go home because a man's enemy shall be of his own household. Come on, think of God. Yes. So it's see in some people's household. There, there's the reason there's problem with the household because there's light and darkness in the same household. Amen. And what fellowship is light here with darkness? The answer is none. So stop feeling guilty. That's right. That's right. Of God. So the decree goes forth, and this includes Daniel. Now, how does this relate to us? Because John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes but to and to. So what's the decree to Daniel? To kill. To kill. Okay. They want to say, I'm well telling you. You watch yourself. You get a breakthrough. You get love. You get anointing. You get joy. You get purpose. You get vision. You get fresh fire. You get the spirit of revelation. Something happen, a blessing come to you. Normally, with with me, within thirty six hours, pow, a storm will hit me to try to steal and kill and destroy what God just gave me. There's a twofold battle. Number one, we got to fight to get to take new ground. Number two, it's a bigger war to to keep and maintain the ground that we got. Amen. There's a fight going on. There's a war. Yeah. That's why dead forty religion oh. exists for no one, for people that are not willing to fight. Amen. That's why they're so encouraged with basketball and football and, and baseball because they see people that's willing to work for something, yeah. or the church is not willing oh. wow. to work. Okay, yes. I could say a whole lot more about that, but Whoa. That's, I, that, that's, that's, that's for another day because I, no. I got Boy. got an ace in the <laughs> hole, so to speak. Okay, <laughs> now, yeah. so. When when it comes down to the place that you realize uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy, well, uh, maybe that happens in the jungles of Africa. <laughs> maybe you think, well, you know, I, I remember when uh, Benny Hinn went to India, and I remember there was there was an attack over there. Uh, they want to, they want to take his life. When you re when when you keep following this down, you re when you realize. My God, there's something trying to kill me. There's something trying to rob me and steal my anointing, my vision. The, the devil doesn't want me to be alive. I come to church and I drink, give me a, oh, I get, I get, I got, I got vision for my life, and then, pow, something happens. You can't, you can't see me on your nose. There are certain things to come. Now, what does this mean? Satan is there roaring like you, seeking who he may There's Daniel minding his own business. I got, I got, I got. I know. Going on with our life. Daniel yeah. minding his own business. <laughs> yes. And the decree is made. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, let, me, let me just kind of put this in here. God is not threatened by this. Amen. God Almighty gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream. Yes. Yes. A 
that he knew he would give Daniel the answer. Yes. Wow. So you don't need to be threatened, but see, no. what I'm telling you, wow. faith is so important. Amen. Now faith is, we're not going to talk about a historical Jesus and resist the him and not be full of fear and unbelief no. now. No, now faith is. Then we've got to fight our battles right now. And we're going to look how Daniel fought this battle and we're going to bring it to our circumstances right now. Amen. 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 Oh, All right. Yes. Okay, so the decree, verse 13, that the, the decree goes forth, kill these wise men. And they're looking, they are looking for Daniel. Because Daniel's one of the wise men. We're going to kill him and his fellows to be slain. See, as there were like a sick and made devour. So they're trying to find Daniel to kill him. Yes. But is God with Daniel? Yes. Is God with you? Yes. There are going to come a time in our life. And this was, I'm telling you, I struggled with unbelief and low self esteem. I don't have time yes. to drag you through that. But there, there just comes a time that you, you learn this, you can't believe what you see, you can't believe what you hear, you can't believe what you feel, you've got to believe what God says. Yes. Because yes. when the devil, yes. when unrighteous oh. kings make a decree, yeah. Come on, say to God. When unrighteous kings make a decree, yeah. when the devil is the ruin life, is seeking to make devour, I'm telling you, God wants to build a hedge around you. Yes. Okay? Lord. Now, okay, so the decree is what? They're, they're looking for Daniel. Verse 14, Then Daniel answered, with, uh, with counsel, with meek prudence, Daniel answered with wisdom to the captain of the king's guard, which had gone forth to slay the, their... their they have left the king's palace to go kill the wise men. The decree has been kill them. And bloodthirsty men can't wait to get there. That's true. Verse 10. So they go for to kill the wise men in Babylon. And Daniel answered and said to the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king that Arioch made the king made the thing known to Daniel? Now, Daniel then is told that the king has had a dream, so that Daniel now has told the whole story. The, God, the, uh, the king, king Nebuchadnezzar has, a, has had a dream, and the sorcerers, the witchcraft people, the occultic people, all his wise men, all his cattle, they couldn't tell him what the dream was, nor could they interpret the, the, the meaning of the dream. So the king's ticked off and going to kill everybody. They got on salary. So the, that's why we're here. So then watch what Daniel did. Remember now, said Daniel answered with wisdom. Yes. Oh. And yeah. they're there to kill you. It's best to use yes. wisdom. Amen. <laughs> you know, and that, that time to ask, wow. act foolish. Wow. Hey, now, they, they come there. They come there to kill Daniel. They're on assignment to kill him. And Daniel's talking to the guy that's been sent there to kill him. What we're talking about is there's yes. a thing favor with God. Amen. Okay? Yes. Then Daniel, verse 16, this is very powerful. Daniel went in and desired the king. He said to the king, If you give me time, give me time, don't be killing everybody. If you give me time, I will pray. Yeah. And God will give me the interpretation of the dream. Hmm. That's why I'm saying my talent tonight is supernatural answers. Yeah. Now what I'm telling you, the the world is going to have problems, people are going to have problems, government is going to have problems, church is going to have problems. There's problems every, just about everywhere that you look. Now, here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to spend the rest of our, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in church talking about what happened back then. Amen. Something got to happen now. Wow. Yes. Now they did. Yes. Now they did. Yes. See, there's people here with problems. Yes. And I'm saying God has answered. Yes. Amen. And what what we don't want to do is come in here and me and you hear me to my horn. Yes. Well, and so we talk about historically to my horn. We don't want you walking out talking about the preacher. We want you to be with God says, wait, you walk out talking about how big your God is. Amen. Come on, somebody needs to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to give God some praise. Yes. Yes. We can see. Yes. What I'm telling you. The supernatural power of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, yes. signs, wonders, spirit, with healing, good tokens, gifts yes. of the Holy Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words of prophecy. They that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Yes. 
Okay, so you can't someone that's been a decree, you can't send now. See, if you can't send someone who's going to a dead church and say, uh, there's no. Billmore signs in one, there's miracle ceiling, right. there's a, you know, right. you, know uh, uh, you don't send you, see when people no. when church people go to whip pastors Amen. and they go to whip churches. Yes. When nothing ever happened. Right. Come on, say, I'm yeah. preaching better than someone yeah. saying to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't send a whip to do a man's job. That's right. Come on, say, don't God. Amen. And God knows, God knows that Daniel has flavor. God has called it. God has anointed it. God has gifted it. So when there's massive problems, here's what I'm saying. We're going to look at Daniel, how Daniel's, Daniel goes to the king and says, listen, give me some time. That's awesome. I'm going to talk to God. Yes. Amen. And that means God going to talk back to me. Yes. There's problems in the land. If you will give me some Whoa. time, I'm going to pray. And God, don't miss this. Yes. He's not talking about his gifting. He's talking about how big his God is. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Glory. Yes. Glory. Yes. Glory. Yes. But it's very important that you understand. Yes. I'm going to need a little bit of time here because, see, yes. when somebody, the, when hell tries to put pressure upon you, yes. you've got to make this major decision real soon. Always say no. Yes. God didn't put that. Uh, uh, God did Someone said, you got to do this right now or else. Uh, nope. No. The, see, the devil wants you to make yeah. rash decisions. Yeah. Yeah. The, God, the Holy Spirit is peaceful, Amen. and God will lead you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Daniel saying that this, here's what we don't want to do. We, we don't want anyone to come in here five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years, and hear about the historical Jesus, and you never know how to go to God. Yeah. To yes. hear his voice, to solve your own problems. Yes. I'm saying God loves you as much as He loves Billy Graham, yes. Yes. G.D. Jackson, or Pretty, whoever. Yes. See, we're trying to get some superstar to come to town. Amen. When Jesus is the one who made the superstar. Amen. Come on, take the God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, so so God, come and tell God, lay His hands upon me. Yeah, God will lay His hands upon you. You don't have to go to it. Come on, take the God. Yes. Yes. You can just get to God. Yes. They that know their God Amen. shall be strong and shall do my joy. Yes. Come on, yes. Jesus, God. Yes. Here's what he's saying. I'll give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Yes. Nothing, nothing shall ever harm you. Yes. I'll give you power over over clean spirit. I'll give you power over sickness and disease. Yes. What are you doing in church to storage? Yes. Yes. Amen. He's saying to come in line. He come to steal, to kill. Say this is the wrong line. Sick who he made the matter. Here's basically what the devil said. Now, this isn't the word he uses, but uh, let's just kind of use Adam and Eve as an example. Did did God give Adam and Eve a pretty good deal? Yes. yes. Who showed up? The devil. One thing to God. Here's basically what the devil said. Now, this is my word usage. <laughs> it's not doing violence to the word of God. Here's basically what the devil said because he's a liar, the father thereof, right? Right. Yes. Yes. Right. He's saying, who is stupid enough to believe my lies? Yes. 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 That's real. Who is stupid enough to give up love for hate? Yes. I was. <laughs> give up heaven for hell. Right. To give up Jesus for the devil. Right. To give up hell for sickness. Yes. To give up uh, riches for poverty. Right. Who gives right. up freedom for bondage? Who is stupid oh. enough? Who is so unwise? That's right. Yes. Now, oh. this is not going to put me in a good light. Yes. But this is going to illustrate what I'm, what I'm saying. Holy Spirit. So the other saying, I was raised in a nice yeah. little town, of people, just a wonderful family, and, and just uh, through a whole bunch of circumstances, I ended up on alcohol. I'm in a car one night, and I handed me this funny look of cigarette. Then the guy gave me a funny look of cigarette, and the next guy said, he says, remember how you felt smoking that funny look of cigarette? Take this pill. Oh. And the cigarette that made you feel that way for four hours, this pill made you feel that way for eight hours. That took me in a trail for years, and, and not only to the drug scene, but the counterculture. Yeah. To the counterculture, the lying, scheming, stealing. Now, I'm, I'm not proud of this. I'm saying this was wrong. This, this is how whacked out, how deceived we were. Yeah. We would actually scheme upon people. We would scheme upon girls. The girls were scheming upon the guys. Everybody's scheming on one another. Right. <laughs> and I'm saying that this is what we said. The people I hung with, we said this very often. If they are stupid enough to believe our lies, they are the problem. Right. That's exactly what yeah. the devil said. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yes. The devil, see, to give up Jesus who is truth. Yes. 
for the devil liar. Right. <coughs> That's basically what the devil's saying. Okay? Right. So when you know, let me let me put this so you understand. I was raised in the Catholic Church. Uh, I never. I used to be an innocent little altar boy, just just so reverent and just. You know. <laughs> and how far? I'm telling you, I, I had no idea how far sin would take me, or how deep it would take yes. me, or how long how yeah. long it would keep me. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I had no idea. It just you know oh. where where you could go. But there's lies in their deception. And so it's very important that we need to understand. Say this, the roaring lion is seeking me is made devour. Yes. The, the point I'm trying to make here, I want, I want to come back to this, that I really I believe that what we really need, we really need to know God very powerfully and intimately, that we really need to spend time with God. Yes. And we really need to understand that we need to make a priority. Yes. So, uh, now, let me, uh, in, in my opinion... Daniel, uh, there, you're going to be put in circumstance, situation. You don't have six months to a year to develop a prayer life. True. You better have been developing a prayer yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. You, know, how, you don't want to waste your time. Redeem the time for the days are evil. Okay, so what you really want to do, you want to begin to get a of God and wrestle and contend with God. You need to develop a prayer list because back in the very back, uh, we've got uh, a long prayer list and just as an example to get you started. Certain things that you can pray, begin to talk to God, and you pray something until until God begins to move in that in that area. Let's just say, let's just say that you, uh, your finances are way, way, way down. You're, you're in poverty, and, and you begin to pray, God, bless my finances. And when you see it begin to come up, it goes from way down to to up some. And now you start to hear just by blind faith. Now it comes up to here. Now you're really praying. Now you. You're gaining and you keep on praying. Say, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Yes. You never settle for where you are. You yeah. want to grow yes, in the Lord. things of God. Yes. And that's basically, there, there's not going to be time to develop a prayer life. Yes. There's going to be a circumstance, situation. Now, faith is, we got to learn. We got to know how to pray. And we got to know how to pray now. Right. Daniel gets up one day just like any other day, and the decree has been made to, uh, to kill him. So right. Daniel walks in. And he desires of the king that the king would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Okay, so basically, uh, the wicked flee when no one's pursuing them, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Yes. To me, it takes a lot of faith, a lot of courage, that God comes to Daniel's house to kill him, he talks to the guy that comes to kill him, and then he goes to the king that's given the decree to kill him. Wow. That's man. This guy is bold. <laughs> this guy has faith in God. So what we what we got to is that there's a, there's something there's something about being in the middle of that hedge, being protected by God, yeah. having said, and what and we really need to understand that God gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream. We're going to see that a little bit. The scripture will say that. God gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream and God going to protect Daniel. Okay? There may be circumstances what we got to do. We can't believe our circumstances. Amen. We got to have the. Don't give your circumstances the power to discourage you. Anybody can quit. Anybody can throw in the towel, but not everybody. See, we're dealing with little things right now because God's going to. We're going to deal with bigger things further down the trail. So we're going to kill that demon of the size of an ant, size of a fly, size of a bumblebee, size of a sparrow. Then you're going to kill a demon the size of a of an eagle. Then you're going to begin to kill tigers and lions, and, and you're going to be a giant killer. See, how far do you want to go with God? See, if I if I if I can't handle a hangnail, how am I going to defeat cancer? Come on, take them, God. Yes. Just think about it. Yes, that's right. So we, so little things happen in our life to yeah. practice our faith. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. This headache, this headache, not going to affect me. That's Come on, take them, God. The fight of defeating a headache is training for for bigger things. Right. Right. So we're not going to give our circumstance the power to discourage it. Yeah. We're going to look what God said. We're going to believe what God said. We're going to come into a line with God because you're going to see things. You're going to see some bad circumstances. Right. You're going to hear some real negativism. Yeah. You're going to hear some real unbelief. Oh. There are going to be circumstances and you're going to have to. The devil's going to try to give you some bad feelings sometimes. Yeah. Come on, thank you, God. Right. Amen. So we got a choice to either believe in our feelings. Uh, here's what will happen. See, in the beginning, oh. we, we will. And when you first get saved, you feel dripping, wet, and anointing. Oh, yes. And you, you feel anointing. You feel strong. Mm -hmm. 
and you be real emotion, be real joy. Right. But there come a time you will no longer live by feeling or emotion. Right. You will begin to live by faith right. and obedience. Right. So when things go wrong, you know, rebel against God. Because things will go wrong. The devil said, that's God that loves you. That's right. right. God that loves you because you've got some bad circumstances. <laughs> no, it's the devil trying to get you mad at God and rebel against God. So the devil trying to tell people, it's it's God that's hurting you. And so he's trying to get us to rebel against God, to hurt God. Right. Who wants to heal us? Yes. And the whole thing is a lie from the devil. So you can't believe your feelings. Right. Come on, right. saints of God. Yes. Yes. You may feel empty. You've got to learn how to speak to yourself. Right. Speak up from hell and overflow. Out of this belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Anybody beside me ever come to a season of discouragement? Yes. Here's what we got. Because uh, I've had God tell me this multiple times. God encouraged me. He said, no, encourage yourself. Amen. Wow. Yes. Come on. They wanted to kill David. And David encouraged himself. Yeah, God tried to make today's church a place. You don't need people. Right. You don't need people to minister to you. You're going to know God for yourself. Amen. But there is a corporate ministry that we're going to draw from one another. This is not about a man pleasing. This is not about man exalting himself. This is not about denomination or organization. This is, not, this is about you and God. Amen. This is about you and God having a relationship. They didn't know their God. Not to the church. They didn't know God. Or people come here. They didn't know God. They know about God. They didn't know Him. Right. 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 Of God. right. Yes. Amen. That's so. I'm telling you, it doesn't fool God. And that doesn't fool seers. Yes. When we come to church pretending we know Him, but we don't know Him. Right. Even when we pretend to try to operate in the gifts. Yes. Right. Uh, that's true. Uh, that's yes. Good. Yes. Basically, let's just put it this way. There's problems there. Right. Yes. And if oh. if see if we get honest enough. It's not a negative confession. It's the truth. There's problems in America. Yes, There's is. problems in planet Earth. Yeah. There's problems in the corporate church. How do you know? Because I got problems. Right. Yeah. So you want to choose you. Yes. So we get it doesn't it's not spiritual to lie. I don't have any problem. Nope. <laughs> I got problems. Right. Well I got a God that's bigger. Yeah. I know who I can go to. Amen. If you shall seek me. You shall find me, God, when you search for me with how? Let your heart so touch your mind. See, I'll wait with these fast food, 45 minute church services, talk about historic religion. We need some fire. We're not trying to get you out. When you come on Sunday, we're not trying to get you out by noon so you can watch a football game. We're trying to get you so in the prison God, you forget about Babylon. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Glory. If it hasn't happened yet, hang around for yes. a while. Oh. There'll be circumstances that would develop yes. that God is in the crowd. He look, who got the goods? Yeah. You will be in circumstances, it'd be by divine design yeah. that when they come out of Egypt to go to the promised land. Forty years in the wilderness, basically what God would say, I'm going to break that independent spirit off of you, and there's no way you can get to the promised land without becoming dependent upon God. Yes. They that know their God shall be strong and shall do it. We, it's not enough to know about a historical yes. Jesus. we got to know Him in the now. Right, right, amen. So God will isolate you. Yes, He will. Wow. That is so right. And we got a choice of feeling sorry. That lonely devil will talk to you. That lonely devil. We don't have to listen. That lonely devil. Shut up. Yes. That lonely devil. He knows so much. But he does. That's exactly. God will allow you to feel alone. Yeah. So that you learn that you're never alone. Right. Right. When will God become our strength? When we go to Him in times of loneliness yes. and emptiness Whoa. and bareness and yes. times of defeat, when yes. you go to the when you learn how to go to the well and draw water from the well. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. that's real. Yes, yes. it is. Oh, glory. Oops. Yes, 
Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. It, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll do the second best way. All right. Maybe I'll make it. These are all my props. All right, I'll do it this way. <laughs> Some of you are going to laugh. Okay. I may want to draw from God. Yes. Remember the remember the woman? Yes. That was hemorrhaging? Yes. Crowd was all around Jesus. She said, if I could just touch it. I could just She touched Jesus such a way that Jesus said, Who touched me? Who drew virtual from me? Somebody touched me. Such a way that they drew the very life. Drew the <coughs> oh. They were so hungry. They were so thirsty. See, we can read the Bibles at home and daydream. Yeah. <coughs> we could have our so-called little prayer time, and it really all is is griping and belly aching. We come to church and make a plan. I'm not going to get there for pre service prayer. I get there for the last five minutes, and I'm present. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to praise. I'm not going to worship. Uh, wow. I spray the devil out. calls me to be spaced out during the oh. preaching of the word. I'll go to the bathroom and the gifts are operating. So we're not drawing. <laughs> yeah. That is real. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Lord, the, the woman. Oh. The woman <coughs> that was hemorrhaging reached out and touched him. See, how will God become our strength? Let me illustrate it before I go to the, my props here. <laughs> We, t we recently talked about Elijah prophesying to Ahab and Jezebel, Thus saith the Lord, there be no rain of dew, let it be in my word. Mm -hmm. Then God tells Elijah the prophet, Go hide yourself. He goes to the brook, he goes into this desert land, he goes the, by the brook Cherith, which is tribut tributary, tributary of the river Jordan. Jordan speaks of death itself. He goes out there where there's no food, there's no source of food. And God said, I'm going to command the ravens to come feed you. He sat there for three and a half years alone. And I, this is my opinion. What the Lord did, because God gave him such fellowship and fellowship with God. Wow. You don't see him murmuring, griping, complaining. He was felt lonely. Because he had such a relationship with God. What I'm telling you, when you get this relationship with God, when there's no people around you going like, so, there'll be a time that you will feel alone. And I, I was going to do this another way, but watch this. The woman that was hammering, she drew. Watch this right here. Okay, so when we leave here, did, did we get a thing out of prayer? Did we get a thing out of praise? God wants to give us something we can take home with us. Come on, take yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got to learn how to draw. Yeah. We got to learn how to drink. Yeah. 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 If any man drink, let him go up to me. Now, church, you can come to church and ignore God. God has plenty of professional ignorers. If any man thirsts, see, hell's after your thirst. He tried to get the hungry and thirsty. After flesh. After the world, after man, whatever. Some kind of idol that we think, oh, I'm going to forsake God for this idol. Give me some flesh, God. <laughs> Here's the question. This is the real question for me. Am I willing to pay the cost? Nehemiah, great cost, great work, great warfare. Am I willing to pay the cost to get alone with God to develop a prayer life? Because if God said, I get my sheep here, if He said, that they that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Spirit. So sometimes, I need to shut up. 
<laughs> we learn to listen. So many voices, they call it chatter. There's so much chatter online. And we're paying, we're following all the chatter, and we end up bearing, so when there's a great need, we don't have the faith to pray. We haven't done it, we haven't paid the price. We haven't done the work, and we haven't overcome the warfare to develop a relationship with God, coming to church, thinking, and we hear about a historical deed, and thinking we're winning, and reality, we're still losing, because the demons, yeah. the signs from a net, fly by saying, you're depressed, you know, <laughs> That's true. <again. laughs> Boy. Born of. Yeah. As a little boy, I played a little league ball, and I mean, I, I would work my body so hard. <laughs> it was a big thing for me to come home and win. Back in the little bit, there were no showers. Back in those days, it was a tub. So we would, I would soak in a bubble bath. Some people love the soak in the bubble bath of some pity. Yeah. We got to get, get, get up from there. In the name. We got to get up from there. We got to get the faith. We got to get the discipline. We need a holy, holy city. People love that church. So they won't be challenged. They won't be convicted. Nobody will say, pray without ceasing. Because we've ceased praying. So Daniel went and desired the king that took faith. Because they didn't know their God, and he realizes if you just give me some time, yes. wow. how long? How come you're serving so long? We need time. Yes. If you want to move in your spirit, it takes time. Yes. There's no fast food church service no. here. No. If you come here, you stay for you won't. You'll never beat the Baptist to the restaurant here. <laughs> Forget about it. You might be for the night service. <laughs> Oh. Daniel went and desired of the king. King, give me time. Here's faith. You give me time, I'll pray. Yes. Amen. And God. Yes. And God. God. Will Amen. give me Amen. the interpretation. Amen. Somebody may stray from God for a while. I'm going to take some time. I'm going to pray. I'm going to tell God on him. Come on, say to God. I'll tell God on him. Right. <laughs> Amen. So the king gives you time. And Daniel goes to his secret place. Everybody needs a time and place they go to meet with God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. No electronic devices. Amen. No, no television. That's right. You're God. Amen. And you begin to wrestle, you begin to contend. She can wrestle until the breaking of the day. There's going to be a time. we got to wrestle. Say, God, I want everything you have for me. I don't want this spirit. I'm sick and tired of eating, sick and tired, and buried and dead, and dry anything. I want the fullness. If we're going to do this thing, let's just go all the way with God. Amen. I begin to wrestle. Amen. We got a phone call from another state. I won't name it. <clears throat> Somebody might be watching. Uh, from another state. And the lady tells me, I'm sick and tired of just going through the motions of Christianity. Amen. Amen. I'm sick of it. Yeah. I want the real thing. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Hallelujah. Daniel went to his house and made the thing known. Oh. Uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. See what the, he understood the power of agreement where two or three are gathered in my name and agree touch against it. It should be done by our Father which is in heaven. There's a prayer of agreement. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. That's why before every church we tried to make a decree that we're gathered in the name of Jesus. I want my life and first love in the church to be about Jesus. Yes. About Jesus. This is God's kingdom. Man, I didn't die for the church. Jesus did. Jesus, let your kingdom come. Let your will be Fool us, God. Amen. Let there be a holy awakening. Yes. Don't Amen. let us sleep during the season. Yes. Amen. Amen, Lord. For real. Daniel went to his house. He went to his secret place. I'm going to develop that just for a little oh. bit. Turn to uh, turn to Psalm ninety one. Amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, God, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, in my God I will trust. Surely, God will deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. See, you see what the song is proclaiming? Yes. And so basically that's where Daniel is in that situation. Look at verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil before me. There will be no plague come nigh my dwelling. God will give his angels charge over me. They'll keep me in all my way. They shall bear thee up upon the hand. Then thou shalt dash your foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The, the lion, young lion that comes against you speaks of the rebellion that will come against you. The adder speaks of a viper, a snake that comes against you. You're going to defeat it. The young lion and the dragon, thou shalt Dragon is a type of the beast nature of Satan. Thou shalt tremble under God your feet because God has because you have set your love upon God. Therefore I, I God will deliver you. I will set you on high because you have you have known my name. You shall call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. Then you said trouble. One or two of you are in trouble. I'm saying that God said tonight, you come to me, your dreams have been shattered. Things that you wanted, you thought was lost. God got a whole new plan for you. I'm going to read this prophecy again. When the world all around you seemed to go crazy, I desired that you would come to me so that I could help you. Amen. That prophesied my message tonight. That's where Daniel is. Yes. That when the world around you seems to be going crazy. Yes, it is. They go crazy in Daniel's life. They're trying to kill him. Come on, saints of God. The thief comes but the spirit to kill the story. Satan trying to kill your faith, your joy, your vision, your anointing. Satan wants to steal your inheritance, your purpose. God wants your right to have meaning and purpose and value, a sense of identity. Don't give it away to the devil. Yes. No. How does Satan steal it? He lies to us and tricks us to give it away. Yes. You've got power with the devil. Yes. So he tried. Satan in the Garden of Eden needed cooperation of Adam and Eve's will. He needed them to choose yes. the forbidden fruit. Right. That's true. Yes. We have a choice. Very well. Oh. I, I, I do want to. Let's go to Psalm 31 real quick. I want to just show you a couple. I want to develop this a little bit because <clears throat> Daniel goes to a secret place. And if you really want to grow in God, just begin. If you, if you don't have, if you just whether you get along with God on a daily basis, 30 minutes a day, 60 minutes a day, 2 hours a day, right. whatever, uh, don't bite enough more than you can chew in the very beginning. Just, just so long that it, that it will grow. Your time right. will still. But set aside a certain time every day that you're going to get along with God. A certain time and a certain place. Mm -hmm. And if you've got other people in the house, inform them. No phone calls, no knocking on the door, no interruption. This is, this is my time with God. And, and I don't want to surrender for anything. Okay, and <clears throat> did I say Psalm 31? Yes. Okay, Psalm 31, verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. Okay, so there's a place in the presence of God. You are so satisfied. You are so fulfilled. You, uh, God shall hide you in the secret of His presence from the pride of man. You shall keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of death. Look at uh, Psalm 32, verse 7. God, you are my hiding place. Amen. There are going to be things happening with you, like and your, your thought. Your thought would be, if I could just get along with God, yes. if I could just just get along, oh. if I could just get to my secret place, if I could just get to the woods, if I could just get out in the yard, if I could just get in my closet, if I could just get down in the basement, that God, you are my hiding place. Yes. You shall preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me round about with songs of deliverance. Yes, you do. All right, let's Lord. go back to Thank Daniel. You so much. Oh, God's going to help us in the now. Yes, he Amen. does. Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to, to Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, his oh. companions, that they would desire mercies, that they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret. What's the secret? The dream. Yes. That no one knows, including Nebuchadnezzar. The only one that knows the dream is God. Because oh. yes. Nebuchadnezzar yes. can't remember it. Right. And that's by divine design. Yes. I've said that there are certain things that God 
Why does God speak in parables? He's testing us if we don't understand the meaning of the parable or the prophecy of the dream. He's testing you. Will I ask for, for the interpretation? Will I admit? I don't know the interpretation. Will I spend time seeking? Sometimes when we get a lot of dreams, if we don't write them down and pray for the meaning of the dream, dreams stop coming to us. Because we're not paying the price. To, we're coming to God, give me a dream. Tell everybody the dream. But we don't know the meaning of the dream. And we don't pray for the meaning, for the, the interpretation. Okay, so Daniel, they go to the mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret. It means something that is hidden. It means it's a mystery. Okay, so there'll be something in our life we don't know what to do. That's right, for sure. And that's by divine design. Yeah. So Daniel prays concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men within Babylon. Verse 19, very powerful. Mm. Then was the secret, that which was hidden, the mystery was revealed to Daniel yeah. in the night vision. If you don't understand what night vision is, speaking of a dream. Now here's what theologians believe. That God gave this dream to Nebuchadnezzar, and you'll see that in the scripture, that the dream came from God. God gave this dream to Nebuchadnezzar, and only God knew the dream, and knew the meaning. And people believe that God gave Daniel, he went to sleep that night, and God spoke to him in a prophetic parable, in a night vision, in a dream, and he received the same dream that Nebuchadnezzar had received. Not only that, the gifting to God. Now, if, if you don't understand the, the meaning of the, the book, uh, the Revelation, when you read Revelation um, in many Bibles, when you turn to the book of Revelation, at the top of the page, many times it says the revelation of John the Divine. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Verse 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ, which means this, mm -hmm. an uncovering. It's a revealing. Yes. In other words, John, the revelator, was put on the island of Patmos because of the Word of God. Yes. Because of the Word of God. Now, what I'm saying is, if you play wow. religious church games, you'll be accepted by the multitude. But if you stand <laughs> pure with Jesus, <clears throat> they're going to try to isolate you, put it in the Isle of Patmos. If you don't ever understand what the Isle of Patmos was, it was what we would call our modern day Alcatraz. Wow. That's where they put the biggest, hardest, meanest, worst criminals, uh, not just murderers, but serial killers, mm. uh, that's that's what that's what the island of Patmos was. Hmm. So when John the Bat when uh, John the Bat John the Revelator he says, now that's where he is. That's the environment that he's in. And John, the Revelator, says, I was in the Spirit, yeah. in the Lord's name. Yeah. Mm. Now if John can get it in the Spirit on the island of Patmos, which is like our modern day Alcatraz, how many know there's not a lot of happy folk in Alcatraz? Yes. That's a lot of joy right there. But he was in the Spirit. So the revelation, the uncovering of Jesus, yeah. what I'm saying, there'll be things that we can't see, but we need to pray for God to open up our eyes. Yeah. Right. There's things that we can't hear, and we need to plead with God, give me an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Right. We may feel spiritually dumb. How come I'm not prophesied to drive off, but we're not contending for and for to become a voice crying in the wilderness. Everyone is looking. They're prophesied to drive off. They're given a ride and exceeding priority. We have as much of God that we have really wanted. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Because if we wanted more, we were contended more. Yes. Yes. Amen. Daniel oh. has already paid the price. Of consecration. We are attempting to consecrate this church to Jesus. Yes, that God has spoken to us about revival. And what we're saying, we're saying what Mary the mother of Jesus said when she was the young little virgin, be it unto me according to your word. Yes, then she says later on, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Mm -hmm. So God is giving us a word, and the word is an assignment. We're trying to come into alignment with the assignment. So if we knew how to do this, we would have already done it. 
Right. If other people know how to do this, they would already have done it. That's right. So we need revelation. Amen. Right. We need to continue oh. prayer. Yes. They didn't know their God. Mm -hmm. Hell doesn't care if you come to church as long as you don't know about it. Hell doesn't care if we know about his trouble with Jesus. That's not threatening him. When you realize you've got power over the devil, you'll stop being afraid of him. You'll no longer be threatened about deliverance. You'll be casting about yourself. Right. You will not be afraid of the devil. The devil will become afraid of you. Just yes. say the builder of God shall be strong. Amen. 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 So then he gets you know, he goes to see what God reveals. He gives him the dream. He gives him the answer. And the Daniel, the night vision. And then, then Daniel gets up and begins to bless the Lord. He began to bless the God of heaven. There was an uncovering. There was a revelation. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For His wisdom and His and the might is His. And He changes the times and the season. He removes King. He sets up King. He gives wisdom to the wise. He gives knowledge to them that knows understanding. And this is a scripture that I pray very, very often. I pray, verse 22, says He reveals the deep and secret things. You know. Ask God to begin to reveal to yes, you the Lord. deep yes. and the secret thing. That's why I'm a big believer in prayer lists. Okay, so I get a long prayer list. When I see something like that, I write it down and I pray it. Yeah. I pray it until it gets in my spirit, so I don't need to look at the paper anymore. It's, I, it's been written upon my heart, upon my mind, so I'm just praying oh. what, what has already been written upon my heart, but what my, it's, it has been, it's been deposited within my spirit. I'm hungry. God reveals to me the deep and secret. Do not serve what you have now. Everybody here has a measure, buddy. Yes. Are you going to say, God, I don't want any more money the rest of my life? Yeah. Or do you want, would you like to have more money? Yes. I'm not, I don't mean greedy. I'm not, I'm not trying to make a billionaire, but just... Just bless the king. That's yeah, right. You're yeah. right. That's right. So I, I, may, I may have some anointing. How many would like to have... More, 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 more. How would you like for God to reveal how? Here, here's my prayer. I'm asking for an anointing that would populate heaven, populate God's kingdom on earth, and populate this church. Amen. For His namesake, for His glory. Amen. I, I plead to God that my life at First London Church would be by Jesus Christ. Yes. That's what I pray. Amen. I pray. I'm not praying for a large church. Right. I'm not praying to, to pastor a large church. I'm praying that I would pastor a pure and powerful church. Amen. 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 I, I believe we're in the hour. And one of the reasons I shared this tonight is that I believe we're in the hour that there needs to be a great revival of the supernatural. Yes. And I believe the supernatural giftings of God operating in Daniel's life, that God is giving to Daniel answers to problems. Right. Yes. right. Now I'm saying that's not for a select few up front. Whosoever. Amen. Yes. Come on, saints. Amen. I double dog dare you to get along with God and develop a relationship Amen. with him. Amen. <laughs> Come on, saints. So he says, he, he, God reveals, which means He will tell, He will discover, He will uncover the deep, which means things are profound and unteach, unsearchable. He will reveal the deep and the secret thing. Things have been concealed. He knoweth, he knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwelleth with Him. I thank Thee, and I praise Thee, O Lord God, of my Father, who hath given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me what we desired of thee, for now you have made the thing known to us, the king's matter. Wow. Well, I think we'd all have joy if we're going to die and then we realize we're going to live. But this is bigger than Daniel. Amen. Because Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego are also kind of the wise men. Yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of life saved. And what we really need to be careful, if we come to a place, we make it about us, and we forget about other people. Yeah. Amen. 
That's why my prayer is, God, give us such a powerful anointing that we would populate heaven, populate God's kingdom upon earth, and populate this church. And I believe that God wants a great return. I double dog dare you to seek God for the supernatural giftings of God. To the supernatural revelation that they that know that God shall be strong and shall do exploit. You do not want to settle for church attendance. But let me put it this way. I mean, how, raise your hand. You got a job. If you got a job, raise your hand. You got a, you got a job. <clears throat> well, when you when you when you go to work, do you just want to go to work but never get a paycheck? No. You want to come to church and not get what God has for you? No. You ever been really, really hungry? I mean, the natural. Have you ever really been hungry? Can you imagine walking in the Golden Corral? <laughs> so hungry and you pay. It smells good, looks good, but you don't need anything. You understand if people come to church, they don't eat. Yes. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. So if people come to church and they watch other people drink, they may make, they might make fun of one or two of you the way you drink. <laughs> Oh. Because they're not moved by the same thing that moves you. They may drink the wrong thing. Yes. And you're drinking the right thing. Yes. That's true. So the natural mind can't comprehend things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Let me get out of that. So Daniel now goes and tells the king. And for the same time, let me scoot down a little bit. Uh, verse 25, then Ariel brought Daniel before the king and hate and hurt thee and said to him, I have found a man that captives of Judah that shall make known to the king the, 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 the interpretation of the dream. Verse 26, and the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, we mean Bel protect his life. Uh, it's not Bel go protect it, God's protecting his life. Are you able to make known it to be the dream which I have seen the interpretation thereof? And Daniel answered the presence of the king, the secret which the king had demanded Listen to what Daniel said. Uh, you mean your astrologers? Your magicians? Your soothsayers? Your sorcerers? Your demonic people? Uh, you mean none of them can interpret? Is that the dream you're talking about? <laughs> See, there's going to be time you hear something. If you're, if you're alcohol... If you're crack cocaine, if you're crystal meth, and your immorality is so good, so good, how come you're so depressed? That's right. That's real. <laughs> so, so he said, yeah. "You're starting the, the magician, the soothsayers. Uh, they, you mean they can't do it? But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Amen. He's now making, he's giving God the glory. There is a God in heaven. Here's what Daniel yes. said: I didn't do this." Yeah. I don't want you to think for a second, King, that if this is about me, this is not about me. Yes. Anything that happened, this is not about Bill Sigmund, yeah. it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about God. Yeah. We need the kingdom of God in here. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. I want you to know this is not about me, it's about there is a God in heaven that reveals secret. Then make known to Nebuchadnezzar which shall be in the latter day. The dream and the vision of the head upon the bed are this. And he goes and he tells the whole dream. For the second time, we're running, we're running out of time here. So it goes on. It just basically tells them the whole dream. In verse 36, this is the dream that we would tell the interpretation thereof. Thou art king, you are the king of kings. <clears throat> now, this is real important. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to go over this too fast. Okay, verse, verse 37, Daniel says in the very important, Thou art king, or a king of kings, for the God of heaven, That's not the king's false god, yes. better rock. God of heaven. Now see, this king, this king thinks it's because of himself yeah. and his false god. So when Daniel says, the God of heaven, there is a God in heaven, God, yeah. he's informing this king, he's telling this king to go wag his head. It's not about you, king. Yeah. It's not about wow. your false God that you're worshiping. Wow. When you've already died, 
You're not afraid of dying. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh. My trouble is I play plus Lord. five down there. <laughs> Two or three. That's fine. <laughs> I'll be thinking about that on my bed. <laughs> Say, God, Amen. Look out to go all the way with God. Yes. yes. How many know we need to know Him? Yes, we do. Okay, the airport's inside. I won't skip some stuff because the airport's in sight. I'm, I'm going to do everything until I get you out by 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Daniel says, verse 37, Thou, O king, you are king of kings, for the God of heaven, Daniel's God, he's the one that's given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. So there was a false god that they served called Merodach. And what Daniel's saying, you didn't, this is not about you, king, this is not about your strength, this is not about your personality, this is not about you, it's not about your false god. This is about my God. Daniel technically is a slave in a foreign land. And whatsoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, hath he given to your hand, hath made thee ruler over all them. And he says, Thou art this head of gold. And it goes on and tells a whole bunch of things <clears throat> that, I'm, that basically tell that uh, his, he. The dream was about all of history from the Nebuchadnezzar's time to the time that Jesus came. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 46. It's, there's such, so much uh, prophecy in that right there. That's, we, we don't have time to do that. Now, what you're going to see here is that this king, this king, you talked about influence. Remember, that's, I told you how big Babylon was. Walls 300 feet high. 80 feet thick. The walls went 33 feet down into the ground so no one could tunnel. Mm. I'm going to come into their, wow. into their territory. That is one powerful wall. Yes. Mm. Well, wow. see, at the size of the wall, or, or this, you know, we put it another way, you can pretty well tell a lot about how powerful, how influential a nation is by the size of the military. That's kind of what they're saying. That's was. <clears throat> what the, that's how strong this nation is. Daniel technically is a slave in a foreign land, and here's this powerful king who's going to bow down to worship Daniel. Daniel doesn't receive the worship because uh, you, you, don't, <laughs> you never yeah. want to go there. Okay, but, uh, yeah. Verse 46, and we're going to come in for later a little bit. We'll wait upon the Lord. No, give 121. Okay, verse 46. <clears throat> then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded. Well, first of all, let me say this. He's trying to worship Daniel in the same way he worshipped Merodach, mm -hmm. the false god. Of course, Daniel didn't receive the worship. And commanded, the king commanded that they should uh, uh, offer offerings and sweet incense unto Daniel. Now, what I'm going to say right now, the, this is scripture. And when I say this, we really need to understand this is for everyone. See, God says, earnestly desire or covet the greatest gift. The greatest gift is the one that's needed at the time. Okay, so um, there's going to be certain circumstances, situations that come, and God is going to give us answers. And when we have answers for the world's problems, they're going to come. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> we, can, we can preach on sin, we can preach on this, we can preach all these different things. Uh, someone in the last stage of cancer at home on their deathbed and you go pray for them, and they come out of that deathbed, word's going to spread. They're going to tell people. Amen. This is what's available to us, because Matthew 10, 1 says, I, I give you power of unclean spirit, I give you power of all sickness and disease. 
Now, so then we need, uh, in the days of the healing tent revival, they would get these strong words of knowledge and get discernment. They would literally see, they would see a demon on a kidney or on their liver, on their pancreas. And that's why some of those old time preachers, they, they, they would bop them. You can't do that in today's side, you get sued. And they put on CNN and, and that's another story. But, but they would literally see and they would, they would, a lot of the old time back in the heat in the 40s and 50s, they'd hit that, they would see that demon on that, on that organ of their body and that demon would come out, out, out of the body. And so there's, we have, God wants to give us answers. There's a revelation, there's an uncovering, there's a revealing. If we don't get seduced by coming and hearing nice, spiritual and political correct, correct messages about historical Jesus mm-hmm. that gets us out by noon so we can, it, so that it will not interrupt our life, our schedule. And what I'm saying, the real Jesus will change everything. He'll change your schedule. Your music, the people you hang with, where amen, you go, amen. where you spend your money, yes. how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, uh-huh. how you behave, how you treat other people. Uh-huh. You wouldn't even choke the parakeet. Thoughts <laughs> <laughs> about Now, in in this situation with Daniel, Matt Proverbs eighteen sixteen says, "A man's gift." makes room for him and brings him before a great man. Amen. I'm going to tell a story I don't think I've ever told. Maybe I have. But I can't give too much detail because I can't go. But so, uh, a certain person that uh, the world would say a man of great power, great influence, wealthy man. I was able to develop a relationship with this man and so he invites me to his house and he wanted me to pray for someone in his family. Someone in the family had a certain illness and he wanted me, because this, this wealthy, influential person that the world would say great success and so he, he, he believed the deliverance. I mean, he didn't really understand it, the flow it like we know it. So he invites me to his house to pray for someone in his family, and I get there, so I ask a few questions. So I'm, I'm trying to get to the root, and then the man tells me, How long is this going to take? We're going out to eat! Wow. Natural man cannot come in. Daniel said, "Give me some time." You know, see, people think we got a magic wand because you're a Christian. You ought to walk in and just, you know, any cloudy day just become sunny. Yeah. <laughs> it just that it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. They that know the God, but see, that takes time. Yes. Yeah. That's why many times people respect athletes as a price to pay. There's a great price to pay. They 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 pay a price with their body to exercise their body to get to get to a realm that they can perform in that realm. A man's gift. I double dog dare you to develop the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God, and the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So that you would this would no longer be talking about historical Jesus. What this does is set the goal right before you. You begin to pursue Him. Here's how the it's this simple. You need someone to practice on. So look in the mirror. <laughs> when I want to practice deliverance, so I did was, oh, I see someone in my own household. I saw him in the mirror. I had a whole lot of training. You know they call it practicing medicine. You can practice the supernatural yeah. on your dog. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. uh-huh. yeah. yeah. myself. Even that parakeet. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna come in for landing. That's true. That's good. The king, verse forty-seven. The king answered unto Daniel and said, "Of the truth, it is that your God is a God of gods." 
and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets. See, he knew, he knew that all his magicians, his soothsayers, his sorcerers, none of them had the answer. And what I'm saying, our God is greater and He knows the answer. Amen. And what Nebuchadnezzar has to figure out, God set him up. God gave him that dream. Yes, that's awesome. And he, had, he knew he had Daniel to interpret the dream. So he's winning the heart now of Nebuchadnezzar. Wow. Come on. Now Nebuchadnezzar Whoa. is confessing Daniel's God. That is so awesome. And worshiping Daniel's God. Amen. Come on, Come on Saints of God. Amen. See, I'm telling you, we can, we can, we can oh, try to preach, we can teach, we can counsel, we can oh. cast out, we can give truth, we can, we can do all kinds of things, try to win people's oh. souls, and sometimes when the supernatural begins to operate. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Oh. yes. I'm sorry if you... If you see the dead race and you still don't get saved, you just. Come on, you see what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? Someone in the last stage of. Uh, this, I grew up one block from this guy. I won't say his last name was Ronnie. And uh, I got saved in 1975. And I heard through the rumor mill, Ronnie got saved. He was tough, man, man. Yeah. He was old school. Ronnie got saved. So I talked to Ronnie, and I, we talked, man, good, had good fellowship. I think he lived in Iowa or someplace. And then word came, Ronnie was dying of cancer. So we're, going, we're praying for him, and he goes from bad to worse. So the story comes, he had two hours to live. Yeah. Two hours to live, so... The Assembly of God pastor goes in, two hours to live, to talk to him one last time. And he prays for Ronnie, and Ronnie gets healed. Two hours to live. He lived four or five years after that. Four or five years after that. Now, you think about a message to his loved ones. You talk about a message to my hometown. Yeah. Jesus, it's a lot. Comrades. Yeah. 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 Well, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Two hours to life, everybody knows it. Oh. Come on, Saint of God. Yeah. I'm telling you, see, oh. we're not going to come here and hear about a historical Jesus. Yeah. We're going to be here yeah. in the now. We're yeah. going to be a, there's an impartation. Yeah. God wants to release something yeah. to us. Yeah. And that we got, and God wants to, we have the answers yeah. for the world's problems. Yes. 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 So verse 48, this is, this is uh, well, I'll put it how the scripture says. Then the king made Daniel a great man. That's not true. God made him a great man. Yes. But the king is going to put him and give him a title and position. So God had made Daniel a great man, and the king gave him many gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of Babylon, the chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. And then Daniel requests favor from Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. How did the, how did the answer come? That my time said that supernatural answers. Here's the challenge that God has for us. That we don't want to know about a historical Jesus. We want to know Him in the now. Right. Now, faith in. Right. Oh, your head's a word of prayer. Oh, Amen. Real quick. Amen. If you're here tonight, you're not saved, you're not right with God, either 